Welcome back. Um, today's example, we're going to look at the moment about a point in a three-dimensional space. Now, one thing I've done here um, is I've put the force vector in the magnitude and projection angle form. I've seen students struggle with this, so I want to include an ex that form in an example or two just to walk you through it. So to find the moment about a point, um, obviously since the last video we talked about cross product, it makes sense we're going to use cross products, right? That's one difference between homework and real life. In real life, you never know what chapter you're in. <laughs> Okay, but for the for our vector on the position vector from from our origin here uh, in the very center out to this point on the handle where we're applying the force, the position vector is pretty straightforward. I can just simply write that um, my position vector equals in the x direction. I have uh, 20. Um, I'm going to write these in meters just just to make life simple. Point two meters times i, and really should be point two oh oh. In the y direction, I have point zero two j, and in the k direction, I have a minus six k, and those are all vectors. For our force, it's a little more complicated. Um, I can calculate the force in the z direction pretty much directly since I know that this force is inclined uh, 30 degrees above the plane parallel to the xy plane, and I can take the sine of 30 or the cosine of 60 to get the same answer, so that I can say that f sub z, and I'm going to change color here, f sub z equals 15, the magnitude of our force, times a sine of 30 equals 7.50. Um, I can project this, this force down onto that F prime line in the XY plane or parallel to the XY plane. And I can come up with F prime in the XY plane equals um, 15.0 cosine of 30 equals 7.50, and it's not equal to 7.50, it's equal to 13.0. I'm sorry. Okay, and now that I have it, have this f prime vector here, I can look at the angle between that vector and the y axis, and I see that the F prime times the cosine is going to give me the component along the y-axis. F prime times the sine of that 10 degrees is going to give me the uh, portion of that component or component of that force along the x-axis. Um, so we can just calculate those directly. F along the x-axis, and it's going in the negative x direction. So I can say it's negative 13.0 times the sine of 10. equals 2.26 and Fy equals 13.0 cosine of 10 and that's equal to 12.8 and that gives me my final F vector in Cartesian forms equals uh, minus 2, that's, I'm sorry, it's a minus up here, minus 2.26 plus i plus 12.8 j plus 7.50 k. So now I have uh, my f and my r in the appropriate format. I can calculate my moment. m0 equals r cross F, and we have to do it in that order, remember, and we can calculate that by evaluating the determinant I, J, K, and my R is point 0.2, point 
0 to minus 6, and my F is minus 2.26, 12.8, that's that one, 7.5. So if you aren't clear where all those numbers came from, look up here and make sure it makes sense to you. So I can evaluate that determinant, and so multiplying out my determinant, I have m0, and that's a vector, I'm sorry, equals i times 0 0.02 times 0 0.7, 0 0.02 times 7.5, 0, 02 times 7.5 minus minus 6 times 12.8. That's not minus 6, that's a minus 0 0.06. Okay, let me correct that. I didn't convert it to meters. So minus 0 0.06. Um, times 12.8 I minus the second term is negative we change the sign two brackets so we're doing J uh, I've got 0 0.2 times 7.5 Minus, again, our minus 0 0.06 times minus 2.26. Close that bracket, close that bracket, J. And for the last piece of it, uh, for our K, we're going to ignore that right-hand column for the numbers, and we're going to do 0 0.2 times 12.8. minus 0 0.02 times minus 2.26, that's K. So if I did all this correctly, my M0 vector is going to be equal to 0.918I minus 1.36j, and these are vectors, plus 2.60k, okay? Those are vectors. And that's our answer. Um, so our net result is a vector, a moment vector that goes off somewhere in this direction, uh, something like that. It's it's hard to draw. But if we go back down for a second, we see that we've got small positive in the I, a negative component in the J, and a large component in the K, positive component. So this is going, we've got a large K, we've got small, we've got small X, small negative in the Y, and a, a fairly large K. Okay? And you will note that this is not the torque around if we had if we had a socket on this and we were trying to turn a screw along that z axis it is not the torque around that z axis right it's it's the moment along a line like this and in a later video we'll talk about projecting this over to the axis that we were we desired but for this one I'm going to, not going to go into that step it's just a dot product but um, when we get this moment about a point through the cross product, that moment is actually perpendicular or normal to the plane formed by our position vector and our force vector. Okay, so it's just normal to this plane there, wherever direction you can envision that going. Okay? And... Um, Make sure you understand this process here. Uh, that likely to come up on an exam, and uh, I've seen students struggle with it. Other than that, 
you don't forget the negative signs and you need to work out your determinant. And I hope you find this helpful, and I'll catch you on the flip side.